Hello, I'm Debbie Lundblad, and today we're going to talk about the Holocaust. I'm going to give you a brief overview before you begin work on your reading and technology project. Although the Holocaust can be a complex and complicated topic, this will give you a brief outline of what the Holocaust was and its meaning. We'll also talk about what the children and teenagers went through during the Holocaust. Let's start our discussion with the definition of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism means prejudice or hatred against Jews. The Holocaust was history's most profound and extreme example of anti-Semitism. The Holocaust was the government-sponsored persecution and murder of European Jews by Nazi Germany and its allies between 1933 and 1945. The Nazi Party, founded in 1919 and led by Adolf Hitler, gained popularity by distributing anti-Jewish propaganda. Millions of people brought bought Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, which means my struggle, which called for the removal of Jews from Germany. To accomplish this removal, in 1935, the Nazi party enacted anti-Jewish laws called the Nuremberg Laws. These laws legalized the separation or removal of Jews from Germany. On November 9, 1938, the Nazis destroyed Jewish synagogues and the shop windows of Jewish-owned stores throughout Germany and Austria. This became known as the Crystal Nacht, or Night of Broken Glass, and began the Nazi era of what is now known as genocide. The word genocide did not even exist before 1944. Now, genocide is defined as committing certain acts in an effort to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. In this case, the Nazis were attempting to systematically murder all the European Jews. In 1933, before the start of the Holocaust, approximately 9.5 million Jews lived in Europe. This represented approximately 1.7% of the total European population. In just over 10 years, about 6 million Jews died in the Holocaust. That amounts to 2 out of every 3 Jews in Europe. Jewish communities across Europe were shattered. In the picture here of two German Jewish families before the war, only two of the people survived the Holocaust. Many of those who did survive were determined to leave Europe and start new lives. The majority of these people went to Israel or the United States. Following Kristallnacht, groups of children were transported to Britain for protection through a program they called Kinder Transport. British citizens paid the Nazis 50 pounds sterling, or about $250, per child. The children had to be between the ages of 3 and 17, and they had to leave Germany alone without their parents. 10,000 of these children were transported to Britain on trains. Only about 20% of these children were ever reunited with their families. Children that were not transported to Britain were subjected, subjected to many injustices and cruelties. At first, Jewish children had restriction, restrictions on when they could go to school and German children were taught that the Jews and Gypsies were racially inferior. Soon, 
the Jews were forbidden to go to German schools at all. Later, Jews were forced to live in ghettos with their families. The conditions in these ghettos were so bad, children often risked their lives just to smuggle food in in order to help feed their families. Many children were left homeless in the ghettos as their parents were either killed or deported to concentration camps. Many other children were also deported to concentration camps. Once they arrived at these camps, though, very young children and the elderly were immediately killed in gas chambers. Older children and young adults were kept for slave labor. Some Jewish children were forced to hide with their families in concealed closets, holes, or even sewers. While in hiding, children had to stay quiet and still continuously for weeks or sometimes months at a time. Other children hid their identities by living with Gentile families or tra traveling through the country and assuming lives as Christians. Some children blended in very well with the non-Jewish community. They lived with Gentiles who didn't know that they were Jewish, and other times they lived in convents. Still, other children survived by working for short periods in villages and then moving on. Many of the older Jewish youth were members of youth leadership groups before the Holocaust, such as these in the Zionist youth movement pictured here. Many of these youth leaders, who had managed to flee to the east during the Nazi invasion, returned to their homelands in Poland, Russia, and Lithuania to help their fellow Jews survive and to stay informed during the German occupation. The German youth were also affected by the Holocaust. The Nazi party actively recruited German children to become part of the Hitler Youth. At first, the group was small, but once Hitler became chancellor in 1933, the group began to grow. In 1936, Hitler made it mandatory that all German children from the age of 10 must become members of the Hitler Youth. The following year, the group began training the boys on how to use rifles. These boys, and later girls too, were sent to fight in the war. In 1945, American soldiers reported fighting against entire units of German children soldiers, 12 years old and younger. One of the most well-known young people from the Holocaust is Anne Frank. She is pictured here at 12 years old in 1941. You have probably at least heard her name or you may have already read a book about her diary. She hid with her family in Amsterdam from July 1942 until they were discovered on August the 4th, 1944. She died at a concentration camp in northern Germany in March 1945, of typhus. I hope that you will use this information presented here to consider what it would have been like for you if you had lived during the time of the Nazi invasion and the Holocaust. How would you have felt? What would you have done? Would you have been willing to hide a Jewish family? Would you have helped them escape? Would you, been, would you have been compassionate towards the Germans? Next, you are asked to view the podcast Daniel Story found at the web address listed on this page. Here you will learn about Daniel and how he lived before the Holocaust and how he survived the Holocaust. You may also visit the links to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum and other sites to learn more about the Holocaust and its victims.